four step come out of 19, which is the Dwaita Vitaka Sutta first. And you don't see the steps, but what you find in the Dwaita Vitaka Sutta is you find him talking in the front part of that sutta. You find him talking about what he did when he was still a bodhisattva. That's before he's enlightenment. And he says, it occurred to me, suppose I divide my thoughts into two classes. Do you remember that? Okay. And then I set on one side the thoughts of sensual desire and thoughts of ill will and thoughts of cruelty. And I set on the other side the thoughts of renunciation of, of um, renunciation and the thoughts of non-ill will and the thoughts of non-cruelty. So right here, he's setting up two sides. And then he tests it and he figures out that if he goes to one side and stays there, you can see him doing this as an experiment. It leads to his affliction, to others' afflictions, the affliction of both. It up, the big part is it obstructs wisdom, obstructs his ability to understand the dependent origination, causes difficulties, leads away from the path that would lead to Nibbana, the ability to get to Nibbana. And he says, this is, this is not right, you know, because it leads away from Nibbana. And as soon as he realized that it leads away, it's, he starts to let go of that. Whenever you, a thought of sensual desire arose in me, I abandoned it from that point on, removed it and did away with it, which simply means let it go, relax, smile and come back, all right? We know that's what he's doing. The second part was, he looked at this in terms of ill will, a thought of cruelty. And when those things came up, it caused a problem. And then he looks at the last one, sensual desire. And then he turns it all around and he changes. He also points out in this sutta one very important thing, very important. He says in section eight of this Dwaita Vitaka Sutta, with excess, he notices that excessive thinking and pondering, excessive thinking and pondering, might tire my body. And when the body is tired, the mind becomes strained. And when the mind is strained, it is far from productive concentration. I always say productive in front of the word concentration. Because we know he went through and he couldn't have done it with absorption. Because absorption would have been taking him to a trance state, totally removed from the world, removed from everything, but totally unable to discover what he needed to discover. So he says, my mind should not be strained. That's where he determines this. To too much thinking causes exhaustion, slows us down, keeps us from getting to the entrance of path. When the mind is strained, it is far from its productive concentration. So I steadied my mind internally, I quieted it, I brought it to singleness and concentrated it. Now, if you're obsessing with the understanding that an object has to be there and you're, you're concentrating on an object, why I'm saying it that way? Why am I saying it that way? Um, it's understanding the purpose of an object being careful to understand the, the purpose and function of an object. We've said this before. If we think the object has an answer in it, we're in trouble. I don't care what the object is because what we really need to be seeing the whole program was to understand the arising and the passing away of all phenomena 
and the impersonal nature of this arising and passing away of the um, all the phenomena. So from this whole thing, he what he comes out with at the end, he's saying to the monks, whatever you frequently think and ponder on, that will become the inclination of your mind. So what I see happening is when a person is thinking that the answer is on the outside or the inside, well, let's see, on the outside concerning the body. And for concentrating on the outside feelings that occur on the body outside from like sound and smell, taste, seeing on the all on touching, you know, for the uh, tactile things. Okay. That's not, that's not the answer. And so I think what has happened with Twim is that has gone to the next coach. And the next coach chose to go to the mind. And the reason he went to the mind and let all of this, all of this understanding that happens here on the outside or in the internal parts of your body, which are tremendously difficult to watch that, but you can do that if you want to. But it's the fixation on watching what happens on the internal parts and organs of your body, okay, is not the answer. It's the, it's the mind. How do we know this? Let's go to the Dhammapada, first one. <laughs> um, mind is the forerunner of all states. Mind made are those. So everything is coming from the mind first before even the sight can occur, the hearing, the, the odors, the taste, the body, everything. Now, the thing about right effort that coincides with the neurocognitive research and the neuroplasticity and how you change a behavior pattern from an old one to a new one. It coincides because you let go of the old pattern, relax your mind, pick up the new pattern, and you repeat it again and again until mind is not hearing you try to use the old one, only the new one. And then it starts to change and then your mind picks up and then it goes automatic. So right effort sits, where does it sit in things? It, in the eightfold path, it's in the last three pieces. So six, seven, and eight, those three pieces have to do with right effort, with right mindfulness, right concentration, okay? The effort are the steps. And we have in the functionality. This is the thing about fooling around with trying to figure out how this works or what happened to it. Is that when we start looking at it, we just can't, we can't see it. We have to practice it and try to play with it and see how it's actually working. So what is he asking us to do? Direct knowledge. He's, he was asking you for direct knowledge. Without direct knowledge, no one can tell you how to change a habit and have it happen. You can sit in a psychologist's office or a, um, a psychiatrist's office or anything. They can't fix you. They can give you the steps to go and fix yourself. But you have to do it to actually have the results. And this is what he knew back then. 